Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn with a behind the scenes video that I've not done for a while and this should be interesting hopefully. I had a thought process which has resulted in some video ideas and I'm going to show you some of the process for that and the thinking behind it. So you can see this case behind me. This is the NZXT H510i that I built a while back and it's a bit dusty. Now I originally built this PC as my main rig in a, somewhere around 2017, I believe. I then shortly afterwards gave it to a friend, sold it to a friend actually for a small amount of money and upgraded to a better machine. Since then, a few years have passed and I built another machine for said friend and I did a sort of retro swap where I swapped him the new machine, which is a new Intel 10th gen platform new-ish 10th uh, gen platform for this which is a core i7-8 series CPU can't remember exactly the model and now I've ended up with this old PC with reasonable specs it has 32 gigs of RAM in it and a core i i7 CPU as I said and a graphics card which I'm going to talk about in a minute and some other things uh, we stripped out all the storage, so there's only one NVMe drive in there, he took all the drives, so there's not very much going on in there. But anyway, my thinking is, I want to use this machine for my children, so because it's pretty old, I want to be able to use this machine for my kids to be able to game on. They're only young, so they don't need anything extreme. My boy likes Forza Horizon 5, and my daughter is really into Grounded, which are two. One's pretty intense, but the other one's not in terms of CPU, GPU usage. And I really wanted to use this machine, because otherwise it's just going to go to waste for them. While doing that, I realised I didn't have a graphics card. Ignore the fact there's a graphics card in there for the moment, <laughs> um, because I'm using my... 3090 in my main machine and I don't happen to have another spare graphics card around. I went on eBay to look for a new GPU or a new old GPU that I could put in there and I saw that like 10 series cards were selling for hundreds of pounds, uh, even like the 770 or 780 GTX is selling for 500, 400, 500 pounds, which I can't believe because it's like multiple series old now, it's ridiculously old. And I thought, and there's no way I'm paying that much money for a graphics card, which is ancient and has been abused, <laughs> used and abused. Anyway, luckily for me, my brother happens to be a bit of a hoarder. And a few years ago, when I gave him a new graphics card upgrade, he held on to the previous ones that he'd had. And so I was fortunate enough that he's got one of those. So this is actually a 1070, and I also have a 980, which is unbelievable, and are really old. And I've acquired those off of him. And then it dawned on me that what I could do is rather than just building a PC, I could actually make some content around it. So the video I'm going to make is going to be how to upgrade and improve your older PC in order to get it running better and get better performance out of it. With obvious things being cleaning the fans, cleaning up the case, cleaning the rad, changing the thermal paste on the CPU, uh, changing the thermal paste on the GPU, which might be a bit more intense, People might not want to do that. Also, I'm not sure the state of this. It hasn't been used for a while. It's just been in its box. Uh, the 980 is obviously a bit older, so that might be worth doing that one on. Um, installing NVMe storage, if you've not got it already. Other sort of simple hints and tips. My other end goal is also to move everything out of this case into a new case. I'm going to use the Lian Lee Li Mini Snow Edition that I recently unboxed and reviewed. And I'm going to take everything out of here and put it in there. The reason being is that this case is not great for airflow. It has two fans on the front rad and two fans on the top and back. So front is intake uh, through the radiator for the CPU cooler and then I'm exhausting out the top and the rear. Not an ideal setup, especially because there's no mesh panel on the front of here. It's essentially completely flat. It has some holes at the side and on the bottom. Which you can probably just about see here. And I'll give some close-up shots and B-roll of that. But this is not great for airflow. There's not much air that flows through here. And it's probably in quite a state in terms of sort of cleanliness of it. 
Uh, my friend isn't that clean in terms of his maintenance of his PC, and I think a lot of normal people probably won't be either, so I'm going to do uh, some content on simple things that include just cleaning the fans, cleaning the radiator, cleaning the case. Some bigger things which include installing extra RAM. In this case I've got 32 gigs, but I'm going to take some out and demonstrate how to install more. Um, cleaning up the CPU thermal paste, replacing that, because this has been, what are we, we're looking at four years maybe, where it was before it was, in, when since it was installed, so it's been used a lot over that time. That's pretty much a daily driver for gaming, so it's had a lot of use. So I think there's probably a lot of dust build up. The, the thermal paste probably needs replacing, so I'm going to show the steps for that. I'm going to show all the process for that and I'll get a video out of it. And I also get to do another build in the Lian Lee Mini Snow Edition. And I'm gonna use uh, Lian Lee's SL120 fans, which I have knocking around. So in, if you watched that previous video, you will have seen I did air fans with Noctua. And this time I'm gonna strip that entire build down because I'm gonna be building in another case in the near future and I'm going to use all this old build in there instead so it'll be a completely different build with RGB instead of air fans, liquid cooled rad uh, radiator and CPU setup obviously so completely different setup in there so it'll be interesting to see what the difference is in terms of the aesthetics on that. This hasn't got any RGB in it really either apart from the RAM so it'll be a very different look in the case and the end result is hopefully I'll end up with a reasonable machine which I can give to my kids. Um, obvious other things that could be upgraded that I'm going to mention is things like BIOS updates. You could change the CPU out while I was here. I could install a ninth generation instead of eighth because it's on an 8750, I think, if I remember correctly. And you can actually go to an i7 9 series CPU potentially. So there's potential room for upgrading their CPU there. So there's loads of different things that you could do to upgrade, even if you can't afford to get a 30 series card. It's gonna be a really good video, I think, potentially for people. Uh, simple things to do and more complicated things to do. Obviously something like stripping a GPU down to do thermal paste on it is a bit scary, but cleaning your fans is fairly easy. Reinstalling Windows is fairly easy. Installing new RAM is fairly easy as long as you know what you're doing. And so I'm just going to get some B-roll of all those different shots. And I thought this would make a nice behind the scenes. But the end result is hopefully this case will get completely changed into another case. I'll end up with an empty case, but I'll be reusing the parts from this and it should be fairly straightforward. And I also will have footage for that video and for a video to compare the Snow Edition with something else. I'm also, as I said, gonna be doing a build. I'm doing a build in a fractal torrent case soon and also in the Lian Lee um, Mini Air, which is another different Lian Lee case. But those will be with different motherboard setups and with the 12th gen Intel CPUs rather than this older system. But hopefully I'll end up with a really nice looking machine that my kids will love and a load of videos that will hopefully be useful to everyone else. So this is part of the journey. I thought it'd be interesting to see a behind the scenes look at it and now I'm gonna get into actually doing the bits. So the other thing I want to do is another video entirely and I'm going to use this machine sort of for it and that is I have a kit here from Corsair which is for the Intel 1700 bracket so this is a back plate setup and the various parts required to install Corsair all-in-one coolers on Intel's new generation of 1700 socket uh, motherboards. So I'm going to use this pump with the motherboard from the other case um, to demonstrate how to install the new bracket on there. So it's sort of like multiple videos in one. So I need to get b-roll of removing all of this or, and also reapplying the thermal paste and all the other bits that I want for my video on how to improve performance, but also capture B-roll of the fitment of the back plate and how you would attach that cooler, this cooler, which is the H110i, I believe, um, to a new generation motherboard. So I've just got to remember to do that and go through all the bits of that. It just includes a back plate and the parts. 
and thumb screws. Uh, AM4 for some reason broke it. I've been sent a similar setup from NZXT as well. This is actually going to be a fairly unusual thing for me because what I'm essentially doing is trying to get footage of cleaning the case and taking everything out. Obviously, usually I'm doing a build video, and but in this I'm doing the opposite. But obviously for my video, I'm not really, I don't need footage of uninstalling the case. What I need footage of is just cleaning the fans and the radiator and installing the RAM and changing the thermal paste on the CPU and the pump and actually doing that while having a camera, which people don't realize. I've had complaints in the past where people say, oh, you didn't show how to change the CPU properly. Try to get the right angle to actually show the process without getting your hands in the way is really difficult. So the idea I've had is actually rather than changing the cooler and the thermal paste while the thing is in the machine, I'm actually gonna take it out of the machine, then try and get the camera into the right angle so that you can't tell that the motherboard is on the desk rather than in the case. That way I'll be able to have different camera angles to show the installation of the RAM the new RAM, the removal of the cooler, the application of the thermal paste, the reinstallation of that without my hands getting in the way and without the case being in the way. Because in an ideal world you want to be like this angle, but obviously trying to get a camera into that angle whilst having enough light and not putting your hands in the way becomes a pain in the bum. Um, so I'm going to do it on the desk. So this is the process for that. I'm going to start by removing the graphics card. And the graphics card is actually going to be one of the parts of this because I'm going to strip the graphics card down, although maybe not the 1070 because I think that's probably pretty clean. But I've got 980 that I'm going to take and clean up as part of this to demonstrate how to do it. Because if you look, this is actually in pretty good condition. It's not too dirty. There's some dust, so maybe I could squirt it with compressed air, but it's a bit dusty in places, but I don't think it's gonna be so badly worn. It's mostly been in a box for quite a while, so it should be okay. You can see the fans are pretty clean, so I don't think it'll be super necessary, but what I might do is get footage anyway, just to demonstrate it. And I have some compressed air somewhere. some more coming tomorrow so I will do that tomorrow. Now I've got to try a delicate process of getting a, getting this rad out while also taking the motherboard out. Try not to destroy anything in the process. And now I have a case that I'm mostly not going to be using apart from this power supply which will be useful in future somewhere. It's an HS, HX850. You can see just how dirty it is though. Really dirty. Pretty dirty. Need some cleaning. So here I am now in a position where I can actually capture this. So it doesn't look like it's out of the case, but I can still show that, um, what I'm doing without, hopefully, without hands getting in the way quite so much. So it should be a much better process. This is perfect here though. This is perfect positioning now. Uh, if you can see that bike, and I've got good light on it and it's at a much better angle. Could possibly even come back a little bit further.
Now I'm trying to get into a position where I can pick it up and not lose. I still give the illusion of it being in the case, which I'll admit is proving a bit more difficult. And that's the mark of all the different thoughts that go into this process, because obviously not only am I taking it off to clean it, but also I want to demonstrate how you would remove and reinstall a CPU. So if you've got an upgrade, if say someone wanted to put an i9 9 series CPU in there, that's how they would do it. And then you just have to apply the thermal paste, which I'll get a shot of, but I'm not going to do yet because this is going to take a couple of nights to get the other case ready for this motherboard to go into. And then there's the stage that I will do that. Then while I have it like this, I also want to get a shot of me installing the RAM, which is going to be a bit more tricky to do without it being obvious that it's not in the case anymore. Now I'm in a position where I have obviously separated the motherboard and the, th and the pump, which you wouldn't necessarily do if you were just looking to clean the pump. You could do all this in the case. So I'm not going to demonstrate that I've taken it out because it wouldn't make sense to do that. But I think I can still use this setup as it is now to negotiate this into a position where I can show the cleaning of it. I'm mentioning in the video about these Noctua wipes. So I want to show those cleaning wipes and also thermal paste. So I'm just going to get some B-roll of that because that's what I'm using. It's not necessarily this video is not sponsored by Noctua or anything, but here I am now with the 
H510i basically deconstructed. I have uh, left some cables in there that I don't need to worry about at the moment, and obviously the original fans as well. I'm actually going to use those to uh, just demonstration a cleaning process. I need to get some footage of that. And I have bought a small electric battery powered air compressor, which is basically um, compressed air for blowing fans with, which is actually quite remarkably powerful. And the idea of this is basically to avoid buying loads of different cans of compressed air, because I've ended up using loads over the last couple of years. And I can use this to obviously just shoot dust out with reasonable, reasonable effect. Um, so I'm going to use that to clean up the case. I'll demonstrate how you would clean it up. So if you're going to stay in this, obviously you could keep that in there. But the next mission is to get everything out of here, set aside some of the other bits, because this is from Z690 build. So it has an Intel 12th gen CPU in it and other bits. So I'm going to take the motherboard out and set it aside, take all the fans out and set them aside and get the old motherboard on some other fans in there so I've got to get through that process now this is obviously not going to be a full installation video because I've already done it but I'm going to get some b-roll of the case with different fans in it and also some of the process of moving everything from this to that and so I can include it in the video it's not going to be a full in-depth video on this case but the idea is if you want to move from one case to another for better airflow than you could now obviously this is a smaller case but it has a lot more fans in it there's no bottom intake fans on this case for example there was nothing down here to let air in there's two at the front but it has a solid pan on it this has two fans on the side at the rear three at the bottom for intake three on top for exhaust and one at the rear for exhaust as well so a lot more cooling potential so I think moving the stuff over we'll see a big improvement in the overall cooling and should hopefully help. The other thing I've got is this radiator so this is uh, Corsair H100i I believe cooler uh, 240 mil cooler that I've had in there for a while it has some standard ML120 fans no RGB what I'm going to do is to get two different shots. One of just giving it a clean because, as you can see, it's fairly dusty. And the other one of installing these uni fans. So these are, this is the box for the AL120s, but actually it's SL120s inside just for storage purposes. So I'm going to install those on the rad instead to give it a better aesthetic. It might not give us good a cooling, but the cleaning process will be nicer. And also with more airflow in the case, it should be better. But the shots here, I obviously want to get two fold shots, one of just the cleaning process. So my, one of my tips in the video is cleaning, get that, get the fans clean, get the rad clean and that will help with airflow and improve things and then the second one is to just go through the process of removing these installing the new fans and setting it up that way Could of course run this under water. Could just run this through some water, but I need to build this in a hurry and I haven't got time for it to dry out. So I'll just rub it down with alcohol wipes and make it a bit cleaner and neater. Actually, the original fans aren't in too bad a state. At least in the front, they're okay. Pretty dirty on the rear, but you could just wipe the whole fan down with alcohol wipes and make them a bit neater and cleaner, but they still work pretty well. See, this is going to be mounted on the side this time, so I think if I'm going to have it like that, I need the fans to be in a certain position. I'm going to do the same setup with the intake. So I need to establish which way around I'm going to go, but basically it'll be like this. And now I have the radiator upgraded 
with Leon Lee's SL120 fans, or downgraded, depending on your opinion. RGB now, but perhaps not quite as good airflow, we'll see. Uh, I'm also contemplating the connections, because with this radiator, the pump has a fan connection, which would usually connect to your AIO pump header. And the fans obviously have a power connection as well. I could connect them to the CPU fan and then this to the pump header, depending on the motherboard. I can't remember what connections it's got. Or maybe I use a Y splitter to run both the pump and the fans into the same connection. Or you connect the fans to the control box, which is then SATA powered and USB powered for the RGB. But then that would run at the speeds assigned in Leon Lee's L Connect software rather than based on the CPU pump. So I'm not sure the best setup. I'll probably try and connect both to the CPU uh, AIO pump setup. That should in theory give the best performance. Well, I can't remember what connections this motherboard has, so I'm going to have to wait and see until I've got it all apart in a minute. Question becomes, what's the easiest way to take it apart? I know from experience that getting the motherboard out without having these fans disconnected is a nightmare. So I guess I'll start with the graphics card and move into, I'm not even sure, uh, disconnecting all the fan cables and then taking all the fans out. Seems a shame to deconstruct this PC because it's actually pretty good. Spent a lot of time on it as well. This is proving fun. Now I'm some way into the process. I've got the motherboard, the old motherboard in. I've got all the Noctua fans out. I'm just setting up the motherboard now with all the screws obviously, and then I'm gonna put the cables in, get those power cables in, and then um, set up the fans, because obviously I've got a lot of fans to install still. Three on top, one at the back, three on the bottom. I've got the rad installed already and now I'm just going into the process of making it all wonderful. Obviously I also have to put more thermal paste on, reapply that, reseat everything. But it's looking quite different already and it will look significantly different. Obviously when I've finished versus how it was before. Here I am now, about um, two hours into the build and all complete. And there we have it. Now, the mini snow edition, complete with SL120 fans, Corsair radiator, a 1070 Ti graphics card, kicking it old school. And a quiet setup, nice and quiet these fans are. The RGB is obviously on standard mode. One annoyance that you will note is there's one of the Corsair sticks of RAM is stuck on the different colours of the others. Frustrating, I'll have to go into the software to try and sort that out. But a minor complaint. And now I have what looks like a very fancy PC, much upgraded from the previous one. So it'll be a nice comparison with the original and the NZXT case. Much nicer looking with the RGB lighting, much better airflow, and hopefully overall a better performance and uh, something my kids will enjoy as well for a few years to come.
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.